Say hey, Yellow Jacket football fans. Welcome to In the Press Box, sponsored by the Calhoun Touchdown Club. And, of course, joining us, as he does every week, is Calhoun head football coach, Coach Clay Stevenson. Coach, uh, nice seeing you. Uh, it was an interesting last Friday game at Creekview. Yes, it was interesting, to uh, to say the least. Um, never been part of anything quite like that. We've had some some crazy times. And the lights went out at Chattooga, and lights went out here, and had some rain delays here or there. But... Uh, nothing like a, a three-hour rain delay in in a, in a visiting locker room. Um, it was uh, you start running out of water, running out of food. Uh, we had to had to make some some different adjustments on the fly there to make sure we could uh, could have something to eat when we left. But um, we got back out there a little after eleven, and uh, obviously didn't uh, didn't turn out the way we wanted to. But it was a uh, Interesting night for sure. A game that started on Friday evening and ended on early Saturday morning. Uh, we uh, there was a couple of attempts to get the team back out on the field, but unfortunately, uh, the lightning persisted. Uh, it was one of the strongest winds I've ever seen in an athletic event. When the wind blew the initial rain delay in, I mean, it ripped up the tents on top of the press box. I mean, it it was unbelievable. I've never seen fans flee a game as fast as they did. Yeah, you know, you could you could see it coming in kind of the whole time and they were doing a lot of construction over at the at their school, so a lot of dust and um, and everything else, debris that was blowing in and had a kickoff that pretty much got up in the air and started coming backward. So that's about the time that they they caught it, but it was yeah, it was a um it went from a packed stadium to uh to, to nothing out there. So it's always always tough when you have weather come through and then for that long of a of a time was uh, was was different. Uh, we won the battle of attendance because we had far more Calhoun fans in the visitor stands than what was left on the home side. Uh, it was the uh, first time I've ever been kicked out of a press box because of the weather. They had to move all the coaches inside to the press box, so there was no room. And with the constant rain, uh, we couldn't continue the broadcast. So we apologize for that. This came with uh, at uh, eight forty three in the evening with or, or with eight minutes and forty three seconds left in the first half in the second quarter, and then it finally got resumed at as coach said at eleven o five, and I think we all got home around two thirty quarter to three in the morning on Saturday morning. Yeah, it was kind of a uh, that weekend was a fog. You know, Saturday <laughs> was um, trying to uh, trying to to recoup and get ready to to work on Sunday. Yeah, it, yeah, and and Sunday. Uh, Sunday came quick. So, yeah, a 17 to 10 victory for uh, Creek uh, Creekview. Uh, nice, nice ball team. Yeah, they're very good. They're solid. Um, you know, that's the third year in a row we've played them. And uh, you know, someone asked if they were better this year than they were. And I, I really don't think so. They've been good the last three years. They've been solid. And, you know, two years ago, you looked at it and they had um, you know, oh, that great running back, the and beast. Linebacker, and they've always been solid up front. Quarterback was back this year. You know, last year we we think we had four interceptions, maybe, and that kind of turned the tide of the game. Um, you know, this year uh, we got one pick, but we were on the, the losing end of the turnover battle, and we, we knew all week it was going to be a a game where we had to to go out and play really well and um, and, and not not make as many mistakes as we did. Thought the kids played hard for four quarters. We had some kids that that played, you know, their hardest games they played in their career, uh, we felt like. But it just uh, we made too many mistakes, um, you know, offensively and defensively, too many too many um, uh, alignment issues that just kind of got us uh, got us off guard a couple times. But um, overall, you know, we played played extremely hard. Um, but give credit to Creekview. They're, they're a solid team up front on both sides of the ball. They were um, – they, they're pretty uh, – Pretty special. Yes, they're a five A team, and they they did it, they came in prepared, and, and they did a good job. Uh, we uh, we fought hard. Uh, we had a touchdown pass called back because of a uh, penalty against the Yellow Jackets. Uh, Imari made a nice catch in the end zone on that play. Uh, Imari once again was involved in a play on the sideline field that uh, uh, did not go our way. He was judged to be out of bounds on a fourth down play, and that uh, just stopped that drive late in the game when we were down seventeen ten. You and I talked when we did the TV show. Uh, we thought we had the momentum. We were pretty sure we were going to win that game at that point in time, and then that call went against us. Yeah, we did. You know, we uh, we felt like we were stopping them um, on defense. And yes. We, you know, we had some stuff that we really liked on offense. We're moving the football. Um, you know, we had a huge penalty that, that we got to correct that, that got us 
way behind the sticks on that right. last drive, but we're able to to kind of scratch and claw back to a manageable fourth down play. And um, you know, obviously, it, we see something different um, on film than, than than what was what was called. But but here's the deal: like I told the kids, you know, it's our job not to put ourselves in that situation to right. where a, a, a ref's call at one in the morning is going to to affect the game. Because you know it was, uh, it's tough. Everything happens full speed, and um, you know it was, it was a, uh, it was a great throw, great catch, um, you know, great play. I wish we could have converted the first down, but uh, you know, like I said, we needed to not, not put ourselves in that situation, and and be able to take care of it before we get to that point. Yeah, we alternated quarterbacks again. Cross went, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me. Cross went four for nine and uh, threw four for 40 yards. Trace went six for seven, threw for 55 yards. Imari completed his one pass on a screen that we set up. Uh, it was a good reception on the end of that pass because he had to get it over a rushing defensive lineman. Hunter White led the way rushing. He had 14 carries for 47 yards and a TD. Uh, Imari led the way in receptions. He had five receptions for 54 yards. And uh, once again, when the more we – the more we were able to get him involved in the offense, uh, it, it was really nice. I, I'm going to bring up one play. <clears throat> we lined up for a play. We were on a drive, and we split Amari out to the side. And I thought this was a great sideline adjustment by you. We called a timeout, brought him back in, and lined him up in the backfield or on the right-hand side. We were moving right to left on, on as you're visualizing this game. And we then we put him in motion and brought him out to where it was just one-on-one -on -one coverage. That was the pass that was completed. We thought we had a first down. The side judge said different. But I, I thought that was a good call. And when it, I thought at that point in time, boy, when he made that catch, I'm thinking, we're going we're to tie this game up. We're going to win this game. Yeah, you know, the, the, the play you're alluding to um, was the touchdown that got called back. Yes. We, we motioned him out. But anytime you can get Amari one-on-one -on -one out there, it's a, it's a good opportunity. Um, and we weren't able, to, weren't able to capitalize on that or – that um, drive weren't able to convert the points after the after the touchdown got called back, and then the the last play like you're talking about was a was just a you know great protection, great throw, great catch, uh, great route, and uh, just didn't quite work out. I got to watch a game from the sideline. Uh, I really enjoyed myself. Uh, I think I want to get back up in the press box, so I, it, it's a nice Eagles view down onto the field. So uh, it's a uh, it it was a very interesting game. It. it uh, a learning process for the Yellow Jackets, and, and we we had some additional injuries, but we're we're battling that constantly. Yeah, you know it's it's uh, you normally get this six, seven, eight games in, and you're just uh, you know I guess unfortunate to to kind of be scratching and clawing week week one, but uh, very proud of you know offensive line had to had to bounce around. Yes, at Wednesday's practice, you know we had some some. Uh, Bad news Monday and Tuesday, and um, when, so Wednesday morning's practice was huge for those guys to kind of figure out. All right, well, this is where you're going to play, and had had some guys bump around and, and you know a new center, um, but very proud of, of what they. You know, I don't think they they busted too many assignments. You know, they got beat some, but you know if they're communicating um, for the most part, we're going to be able to uh, to have um, have some positive plays, and, and they did that to for the most part. And they, you know both quarterbacks. Did, did a great job. They did enough. They did enough to win the football game for us, and um, so so very proud of, of those guys because that was their first first time on the road um, in a, in a, actually in any game, but you know definitely on the road and um, and then having the the layoff and the, the different things where you, you know you can't quite. It wasn't a normal football game, so so very impressed with with both of those guys and you know out on the edges. I thought receivers and, and tight ends played played. Yeah, I was impressed <clears throat> coming back at 11:05 p.m. on Friday night. I was impressed with the intensity. I th I thought I thought our energy level was up. In fact, I thought our energy level was a little bit better than Creekview's w when we came back to play. Yeah, it definitely was. We we, we challenged <coughs> them at at the it wasn't the half, but it was the, the three hour <laughs> break um, before the half uh, that that to go out and just you know have a good time and, and play football. That's what. Uh, a lot of times too much pressure gets put on put on kids to uh to to it, it's a it's a it's a game you're supposed to go out and compete and have fun and that's what i told them i said that all the all the fluff stuff's gonna be gone you know there's no band no fans um, 
very few fans, no cheerleaders. So I said, you just got to go out and, and play for the love of the game because there's nobody out there. And, and we did that. We went out and, and played a great, you know, last two and a half quarter um, defense. It, yes, they, I, I, I agree with you completely. State Farm Player of the Week was McCaden Griffin. Used to wear number 26. He's now wearing number six. He had seven tackles and three assists. So congratulations for McCaden Griffin being the State Farm Player of the Week. Yeah, he did a great job. You know, he got to play uh, both ways, played receiver, um, and played uh, free safety, caught three or four punts, you know, and they were uh, – you know, one of them was kind of in the wind. So, uh, he just played an overall uh, very good game. Yeah, the uh, that last kickoff, I remember watching it go across midfield, and it got to our 40, it got to our 35, and then it started going back to midfield. And I'm thinking somebody's going to get hurt trying to catch this ball. That's right, no doubt. Yeah, exactly. Our our Calhoun players of the game, uh, the special teams player was Isaiah Knowles, and boy, did he unload on somebody on a kickoff or a punt. Well, he did his kickoff. Um, okay. He actually was in on a couple of tackles, but that one in particular, he, he was the first one down there, you know, ran over a blocker and made the tackle. Um, you know, he's a perfect example, like I told the kids on Monday during our meeting, he's a perfect example of just being ready when your time's called. You know, it's um, the game of the week probably wasn't – Quite sure that definitely didn't know he was going to be on the on the kickoff team, um, but he's always you know he, he treats practice like a game. You know he's always practicing as hard as he can, and you know you're looking for guys like that when you start having injuries that you can trust. Yeah, and, uh, it's a challenge to to other guys to to you know not just go through the motions of practice, but go out there and, and, and practice. You know whether you're on scout team or, or not or whatever you're in, whatever your role it is, to go out there and and be ready to play when the time comes. And, and he was able to do that. Our hog of the week was Grant Prine playing a different position than he had been playing. Yeah, he did. You know, he went to morning, like you said, had six thirty practice. So, um, <laughs> Coach Ashley got him on the board about six fifteen, and um, he's he's a super smart kid. I think he's fourth in his class. Wow, um, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, you know, the the mental part wasn't, um, you know, wasn't as tough for him just because he is so smart. But it's just a, it's physically it's different. You know, it's a different uh, drop and different. Jump in and, and play well. Our offensive player of the week was Amari. He, as we said, five receptions for 55 yards. He also rushed three times for 12 yards and had a pass completion. He was one for one. He did a little bit of all three. Um, <laughs> yeah. played, a, uh, played a good game. Anytime it was near him, he was catching it. Yeah, and then our defensive player of the week was Alec Upshaw, number 58, with 10 tackles. And by the way, Amari is number 85. Uh, 10 tackles for Alec Upshaw, number 58, one sack, one interception. And I'm standing on the sidelines, and I'm always up in the press box watching the guys, except for when I'm at practice. But standing on the sidelines, it, it seemed like every time I saw him come onto the field for a series, he, he grew another five or ten pounds. He he's gotten big. Yes, he is. Um, his potential is is super high, and he finally, you know, had a uh, had a, he had to jump in and start most of the games last year from injuries as a tenth grader. So we're looking forward to him. Really maturing and developing as a player, and I think that was the first step uh, to a, to a great uh, great next two years for him. We're going to talk about uh, the game coming up with Westminster on the thirtieth. Uh, we're going to be off this coming Friday. We'll have a podcast for you again next uh, next Thursday, also that you can listen to at the Fox one hundred three point five FM ten thirty AM or stream online at the Fox one hundred three five dot com, and uh, we'll, we'll get you all situated there. And we'll talk about. Westminster here in, in just a little bit. But I did want to mention one thing as I'm reading uh, the uh, different websites. Uh, congratulations to Imari because he was picked as number three rated player in a dynamite dozen for the Chattanooga Times Free Press. There was a nice interview in the paper yesterday. Uh, most of it was with you talking about Imari, and uh, you had glowing things to say about him naturally. But congratulations to him for being the number three rated player player out of 12 in Chattanooga area. Yeah, he's um you know he's a he's a special player and uh looking for for great things uh for him on and off the field uh for these next few months until he uh until he gets to uh until he gets to, to college. Exactly. And and we, we don't want to rush things along. It'll happen soon enough, but uh, let's take advantage of, of while he is here. McCaden Griffin was also recognized in an article to in today's Chattanooga Times Free Press as one of the best nine quarter cornerbacks 
defensive backs. Uh, they've got him listed there. Of course, we've got him playing at free safety, but it doesn't really make any difference. But uh, congratulations to him also. Yeah, no, he's, he's done a really good job. Um, obviously, a great great corner the last two years. So he's yes. A three-year starter for us. We just needed him at, at free safety this year. And uh, he went in there and, and played a great game. So the, the rest of the defense, you know, I feel like they did a you know, played a – Played a tremendous game. There were a few third down conversions that, um, if we could have gotten off the field, felt like it'd have been a, a different different game. But uh, overall, they they played hard, and uh, like I said, didn't score their first game. Yeah, the def- the the Blackshirt defense had a good game. They only gave up 17 points in, in very trying c- circumstances. Aiden Adcock had two tackles for a loss. Uh, Trey Perkins had a tackle for a loss. Sager Quinn had a tackle for a loss. And speaking of getting big, <laughs> Sager Quinn is a hoss out there, and Alec. Upshaw with his one tackle for a loss. So congratulations to the black shirt defense as as well as the pound and shoot offense. And uh, like we said, we'll, uh, uh, injuries are part of the game. Uh, it's just like, like we talked about earlier, just an opportunity to develop depth. We wish we didn't have them, but uh, it, it's going to happen. Yeah, no, th- this week for sure we've um, been able to get a lot of people some, some, some reps. <laughs> uh, yes. you know, it, normally you don't like off weeks after a loss. Especially first game of the year, you know, it's, it's kind of a unique off week. But uh, it's been good this week. We've been able to get a lot of um, a lot of individual done, which is you know where we go back to the basics of, of blocking and tackling and, and that kind of thing. So that you don't normally get to have too much when you're uh, when you're game planning for the week. You know, so it's been a good good week so far. We got a couple more practices to go, so hopefully we can we can continue to uh, to, to get better amongst ourselves and then uh, get some people healed up and, and then go to work Sunday and be ready for next Friday. And yeah, when you, uh, folks, when you go to church this weekend, you might say a prayer for healing for uh, a lot of the players as well as your own, own personal preferences and your own personal prayers. Uh, the schedule doesn't get any easier. Like we said, we do not play this coming Friday. We are off, and we, on the 30th, we will be taking on Westminster Wildcats, a uh, traditionally strong private school out of the Atlanta area, then Cartersville. And then we end up with Cambridge. So, uh, and then we're going to get another bye week. But this bye week to me just comes at a really, really good time, uh, not only for the healing, but so that you can do work on some of these fundamentals that you're talking about. And this, this is a good time for you to, it's not catch up. It's just you're going to probably re-educate some people because they're going to be in different positions. Yeah, it is. You know, it's, um, like I said earlier, it's, it's been a good week to, to get a lot of quality reps, you know, so without having to, to stress about a game plan and, and, and get too many plays, um, you know, seeing plays on, on the defensive side or, or coach to my offense. So um, it's go, it's going to be a uh, it's it's a like you said it's a great time. You wouldn't think that when we made the schedule and it was kind of uh, kind of odd that it fell yes. that way, but it did. So uh, I think we've made the most of it this week, and, and hopefully, like I said, we can we can finish these this week up uh, on a on a positive note and. The nice thing about it is we're going to get 72 hours at the end of this week, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for the guys, not for the coaches. They're going to be busy doing their thing. But that's going to be 72-plus uh, hours of healing, and, and they're really going to – it's going to come at a great time, I think. Yeah, it is. It is. We're, um, you know, we've got – coaching-wise, we've got, there's three or four games that, that we're going to spread out to starting tonight. Adairs will run uh, Pepper play tonight at uh, Pepper, so we've got a few coaches going there, and then – Cars will play tomorrow, Westminster plays tomorrow in Cambridge. So we're going to try to split up and, and knock out as, you know, as, many, uh, as many games as we can. You know, the last few years, scouting's been a little bit different because yeah. it's become uh, the full region was on the same bye week. Yes. So everybody in the region was off, so it was kind of – we didn't really have any games to go to. But being able to have both, uh, both off weeks before we even play should give us some, some good opportunity to get out and, and see some things. If I go over to Pepperell tonight and watch a, a Darisville play, it'll be the third time I've seen him this this season. I, I don't know which game you're headed to, but I could, I just got a feeling that somebody's going to think I should be wearing green That's and right. keep showing up. That's right. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's you know the, the great thing about having different games on Thursdays and some Saturdays and uh, off weeks is you get to get out and, and, and watch games. You know, that's what fall sport is high school football. So. You know, you're not the only one that that, uh, that enjoys getting to a game, even though you don't have a dollar in the pocket. Yeah, it, it, it's going to be interesting. I'll have to check with my darling bride and see if I'm I'm allowed to go. 
Westminster, a week from this coming Friday, uh, a team that we've played in the past. Uh, they, they have a veteran coach. Uh, I, can, I can remember when I was at one of your practices this week, I can remember seeing the, the double wing backs, and I can, I can remember seeing the double teams from the, the right guards, le- right guard and center, right left guard and center. Uh, I don't think a whole lot has changed. Then I watched previews on huddle a little bit, and they th- they've been throwing the ball quite a bit in the first game of the season. Yeah, you know, not too much has changed from what they used to do. They still give you a lot of a lot of formations, a lot of um, shifts, a lot of motions, trading, and just different things to uh, try to make it difficult lining up. But um, you know, last week is was very similar. The Creek View gave us a lot of the same formations and a lot of the same looks that that uh, that we think Westminster is going to give us. So it's. Um, it's it. Last week was, a, I think, a good kind of warm up, I guess, for defensively wise to, to to get them lined up the same stuff Westminster does, and that's what that's what I remember from them from um, ten years ago, whenever it was that we we used to play them. They were, they were difficult to prepare for on the offensive side and defensive side. They do a they do a lot of stuff um, on the defensive side as well. They move around a lot and change their looks in the secondary. So uh, you know, Sunday when we will start honing in on right on. Game planning for them, you know, we'll, we'll kind of start sorting through that. But we know they're going to be well coached. You know, they, like you said, Coach Romberg's been there for a long time, and and they've got they've got really good players as well. You know, remind us a lot of a lot of Creek View. They were just going to play hard, um, and uh, they're playing playing pace. They love it last week. Played pace this week, so um, they'll have two games on their butt, and, and we'll be ready next Saturday. But we're going to be healthy, folks, and we're going to be ready to go, uh, Coach. I'm going to let you get back to your duties. Uh, I, I know you're busy. There's th- no time off, and it starts tonight going to football games, and then Sunday comes the preparation for the Westminster Wildcats here. And one one more mention, we are going to be honoring our 2014 state championship team. It's a 10-year anniversary of that championship on th- on the 30th of August when we host Westminster. Yeah, hopefully we can uh, you know, have a lot of those guys. It's crazy. It's been 10 years. Yeah. Uh, to remember that like it was, uh, like it was yesterday. Um, Hope was – Pregnant. Yeah, yes, we had Tucker three days after the game. I think. Well, I remember maybe, maybe two days after the game. So. I remember watching her come to the games. I mean, she she was getting assistance going up and down the bleachers. That's right. So it's crazy. It's been ten years, but hopefully we can get a lot of those guys out there pregame and and, and reminisce a little bit and then uh, put on a good performance for them and bring them in. We really appreciate you listening, folks. This is being brought to you by the Calhoun Touchdown Club. Don't forget, you can uh, watch it on the stream at thefox1035.com and don't forget when we go on the air again a week from Friday you'll be listening to us at the Fox at 103.5 FM and 10:30 a.m. for coach Stevenson and myself you've been in the press box <laughs>